Hey guys, I hope you're doing well. Thanks for tuning in to Wingate Solutions. Today we're going to be talking about plate carriers. So how I set mine up, uh, some tips and tricks, talk about plate sizing a little bit, how to wear it, what to have on it. Uh, in no means is what I say the way to go. Your miles may vary. It's going to be mission specific to every individual. This is kind of just a standard or baseline that I use for setting up my gear. So if you get something out of it, awesome. Um, but don't think in any way that this is the way or the only way to set this stuff up. There's a lot of different ways and reasons and guys have different roles, responsibilities and mindsets on why we run this kit. So if your opinion varies, cool. Let me know down in the comments uh, what you like or didn't like. But uh, all right, let's get after it. The most important thing when picking a plate carrier is understand the appropriate size plate for your body size. There's a lot of ways online to go look that up. And I heavily recommend you figure out your plate size first. A lot of guys do it backwards. They get a plate carrier because they think it looks cool and then they'll fit plates in it. Don't do that. Figure out your plate size. Figure out the threat level you want to stop. Figure out a budget. Get your plates figured out and then figure out a plate bag to go with those plates. Cool? Typically, you're going to measure nipple to nipple, sternal notch to above the navel. That's kind of the basics for figuring out your plate size you want it to cover your vitals, but you don't want it to be too big that you can't fight in it or move in it or shoulder a rifle appropriately. So I err on smaller over larger if you're in between two plate sizes, because I'd rather be mobile and have en uh, enough protection, but not go overboard to the point where I can't effectively draw a pistol um, or shoulder the rifle because the plates are way up in my shoulder pocket, that sort of thing. So something to look into, definitely do your homework. Most average guys, guys are going to be either medium sappy, sappy is the industry standard sizing, or shooters cut 10 by 12. So 10 by 12 is going to be standard or medium sappy for most guys. I'm a large sappy guy because I'm a bigger human, 6'4", 240. Um, so I run large sappy. Most people are not going to be XL sappy. Those things are ginormous. So you might though, depending if you're a really big person. All right, real quick, I'm going to talk about sizing a little bit again and what plates I use. So these are HESCO 3810s. They're kind of middle of the road. They're a little pricey, but I'd recommend if you're on a budget, saving up and getting a good set of plates. They're going to wear well on you. They're going to be lightweight and comfortable and stop the threats that you want to stop, right? 3810s are good. There's a lot of other ones. Do your research exactly on what plates you want, but don't cheap out on plates. They're not going to stop where you want them to. You're not going to be able to trust them. They're going to be uncomfortable and probably going to be heavy. So for me, lightweight, multi-curve plates are the way to go. I don't think I'll ever buy single plates ever again or single curve plates ever again. And I don't like wearing heavy plates because I'm not going to train and I'm not going to be mobile. I'm not going to be as effective at moving around in that kit. So for me, set a level three plus like this is perfect. If you need level four because you want that armor piercing protection, go level four, but save up to get lighter weight ones if you can. If you intend to be moving around with a plate carrier on, uh, is my recommendation. You're more likely to train it. You're more likely to wear it if it's lightweight and comfortable. So these are size large sappies. You can see it protects my vital area. I need to still be able to move in these. I need to be able to bend over without it impeding. I need to be able to do like things like sit-ups and I should be able to do anything like that and not have it impede me too much. If you can't retain your flexibility, then your plate's probably too big for you. I'd stay away from steel plates personally. I'd stay away from single curve unless you've tried out single curve and decided that you're one of the weird people that like single curve plates. Most guys aren't going to like single curve. It's going to end up sticking out from front of your chest. It's going to be awkward for shoulder and a rifle. It can feel really weird on the back. Most guys like multi-curve. But try them out. Your miles may vary. If you can get a buddy that has plates already, you can test those out for yourself. I would recommend doing that. But stay away from steel. They're heavy. You're not going to train in them. They don't have the protection rating you really want. You're going to have spalling issues. Get a good set of ceramic or ceramic poly hybrid type plates like this. They're not fragile like the market wants you to believe. I mean, if you slam this on concrete on a corner, it might cause an issue, but they're way more durable than people think. If it's sitting in a patrol car bouncing around in a hot trunk, 
for years, yeah, that might be an issue after a while. You might want to get them x-rayed or you might want to stick to that five-year service life, especially if an agency is paying for them. That's great. Have them replace them every five years. But for you and me, you're taking care of this stuff. It's going to last and they're not as fragile as you think. Just doing the things, training and banging around with your play carrier on, you're probably going to be fine. I wouldn't worry about it. I'd go with ceramic like these. Hesco, good brand. So plate carriers are very personal preference. What works for me might not work for you, whether that's the actual plate carrier itself or how you run it, whether you need more structure and weight bearing, or if you want more minimalist. But the big thing for me is finding out what style is going to work for your body type, what shoulder strap designs you like. Like for me, I don't like buckles on my shoulder straps. I like it very simple so that it doesn't impede my ability to shoulder a rifle. So that's something that I've found over the years. Certain ones don't work for me as good as others, but it might work for you. So it's really personal preference based. Uh, and unfortunately, it just takes time to figure out which ones work. Uh, a lot of good ones on the market. So do your research. This is just the one I've come to like. And it's the Defense Mechanisms MEP-C. Mission Essential Plate Carrier, MEPC, right? Very simple in design. It doesn't have a whole ton of fancy features. It's two plate bags, shoulder straps, and a cummerbund, right? That's pretty much the basics of any plate carrier, but they don't try to overdo any of that. It's got just enough padding and mesh in the back for breathability. It holds the plates securely. Make sure you get the right carrier size for your intended plates. It allows me to put placards on, very simple shoulder straps, and then it kind of has the industry strain, industry standard cummerbund setup where you can use other manufacturers cummerbunds whatever you feel like using i'm a huge fan of quick release cummerbunds it just makes it so much easier to don and off and if you find yourself removing it or taking it on an awful lot it's so much more comfortable that way uh, instead of having to deal with a flap for the velcro i did it for years for work it's a pain uh, it works and you might like that i like to be quick on and off uh, some guys are worried about the service life of something like this, the QD. From my experience, you get reputable ones, like these are the rock buckles, first spear tubes are good. Uh, there's some Cobra type buckles that are either plastic or metal that are good for cummerbunds, or even something simple like ITW, Nexus hardware, like male, female, standard, like one inch buckles would work because our user serviceable. And if this was to break, I can always take the plastic part off and fix it with a piece of paracord if I really had to. And then I would just have a standard Velcro chest, uh, cumberbund rather. So it's not that big of a deal to me that they're plastic and potentially could be a failure point because the reward of having the ease of use of it being QD is just, it outweighs it for me. So your miles may vary. I run the front of the cumberbund actually over top of my placard, as you can see. So it's a little bit unique in that it, isn't going to work with all placard systems. It needs to be a placard that has Velcro on the front like this one. This is a prototype of mine. But it allows me to sandwich my mags closer to my plate carrier and it holds everything together. I don't have as much bulk. I like it. I also have the ability to change it, overlap it if I need a little, tighten it a little, a little bit or if I need to loosen it a little bit depending on what kind of jacket I'm wearing. I could do that as well if the cover run flap was underneath the placard. That would work perfectly fine as well. So that's going to be more of the standard that most guys are going to run. But just in case you see this and think it looks a little different, that's why. So for me, a plate carrier is simple. Again, it just holds plates to my body. That's pretty much it. The pro to that is I also can add gear to it. And that's going to be dependent on your philosophy of use. I like to keep mine a little simpler. I run just the three mags. Got a little knife on it. Tourniquet some admin in a, in a dangler, and uh, that's it. I keep the back slick because I'm typically running an assault bag with this setup, or I like the scalability of being able to do that where I have different gear that I can add or minus. So I can be as slick as this right now, or I can add a pack and now I have whatever extra gear I'd want with me. I like that rather than being overloaded on the plate carrier, but that's perfectly fine if, uh, the plate carrier is going to be your main thing and you want to have seven, eight mags on it, go ahead. As long as you have a reason for it um, and everybody's going to be a little different there. But I like just the simple three placard. I can also throw mags in 
the cummerbund as well, being this elastic one with the different cells on it. That works if I had to in a pinch. I run two, one or two mags on my belt. And then again, I have my assault bag, throw a few more mags in. So for me, having that scalability is important. Um, it really depends on what you intend to use this for. It's very important that you run the plate carrier appropriately to your body type and your body size. Make sure they're the right size plates, but also how you actually run it on your body. So you don't want the plate to be way too low to the point where all of this vital area is unprotected. A lot of guys run their plate bags way too low, either on the front or the back. A lot of guys will have the front where it needs to be, high up underneath that sternal notch, but then the rear plate bag will be sagging down half their back. And different body types have a little more trouble getting the bags to be sitting where they need to be. But you definitely should try to. Whether you tighten up the shoulder straps or you adjust the height of your cummerbund on the front or the back to kind of get that shift so that your rear bag is actually high enough, it's going to take a little bit of trial and error. And it might be dependent on your plate carrier and the type of plates you have. But in general, you want the plates to be riding higher on your chest. I don't really need this protecting my abdomen, even though I don't want to get shot there. I'm not probably not going to die immediately from getting shot in the abdomen. I'm going to have lifelong problems probably from that, but that's a side note that I can figure out afterwards. This plate carrier is to protect the things I need protected right now to stay in a fight, right? So it's my heart, my lungs, pretty much my spine, things like that. I don't want to give up any of that real estate uh, for comfort. You really just need to learn to run a plate carrier the right way. And if the plates are lightweight and curved to your body and the right size, it's really not going to be uncomfortable anyway. All right. A couple tips on running the rifle with the plate carrier. First of all, if you don't do it a lot, it can be uncomfortable. If the plates are sized appropriately to you and you have them in the right spot, it's really not that big of a deal. With a little bit of training, you'll figure it out. It's another reason why it's important to have low pro shoulder straps without giant buckles getting in the way because they make it a little more awkward for you to shoulder. Now you may need to adjust where the toe of your stock makes contact with your shoulder a little bit with plate carrier. It just kind of is what it is. Some guys will end up canting the rifle a little bit and at closer distances that'll work perfectly fine or running the rifle a little bit higher than normal. That works good too because it allows that heads up position, more natural position rather than cranking your neck too much. The big thing I don't like to do is try to stick the rifle on top of the plate carrier because you'll end up shy sliding around and it doesn't have a stable position to mount to. Guys will talk about collapsing their stock for that purpose. I find I run the stock at the same length of the plate carrier and I'm running it right above slash right next to that plate as long as the plate is the appropriate size. If you're running giant plates and you're a smaller guy, you're going to have to just figure it out. <clears throat> Another thing, slings when you're setting it up. Make sure you set up the length of your sling with kit on because it adds bulk to you. You want to make sure you still have enough adjustment range that you can get the rifle up in your workspace without the sling getting in the way. I want to be able to do reloads, work around barricades, clear malfunctions, that sort of thing. Another thing, charging handles. A lot of guys really like to upgrade the charging handles to a really big ambi charging handle because it's easier to manipulate the gun, which is cool. Just realize it might actually be in the way with kit. You don't want your rifle to come out of battery because that charging handle gets caught on a mag or caught on something on your plate carrier, and it happens. It's one of the reasons why I like to run just a mil spec 7075 good quality, good brand charging handle or one of the smaller BCM latches because I find they're still easy to get on, but they're not so big. They're getting caught on things. So just a little thing to think about. All right, a little close up. We'll start at the bottom. So danglers, right? Sack pouches. This is a Ferro dangler. Uh, it was originally a lot longer. I trimmed it and had my wife sew it up to be more of a mini dangler. And that's the route I would go. If you're looking to get a dangler pouch, I'd get a mini so that's not super long and bulky and getting in the way of your belt, things like that. But if you need a bigger one, go with a bigger one. That's kind of up to you. I like a mini dangler. Placards, personal preference, right? 
the original idea of the placards was for quick availability of different loadouts. So you might want to run a sub gun or 308 mags or whatever was the ability to unclip and then put a new placard on. And that's great if you're actually doing that. I don't. I usually just leave the same loadout on all the time and it works. So they're just going to Velcro to the plate bag and have some kind of attachment point on here. I have G hooks on something like this S tack. It has quasim buckles that are going to attach to your plate carrier. They're the two industry standards. They work great. I like the G hooks because they're a little more low profile. They're flat. It allows my mags to sit a lot closer to my plate carrier and they are not going to break. But the quasms are perfectly fine too and field repairable. If you had to, you could run paracord through this loop and then to your plate carrier. It wouldn't be a big deal if one of these broke. It's not doing that much work anyway. The Velcro is really what's holding it to the carrier. They're just kind of helping it stay in place as a backup. So not a big deal if you're running the quasms. They're cool. I have a tourniquet on a wing. It allows me to reach you with both hands and it supplements the one I have on my belt as well. So I have two. Shoulder straps. Depending on how much weight you're running, depending on your plate carrier setup, you may or may not want shoulder strap pads or sleeves. These are like the cable management sleeves, I believe, from Defense Mechanisms. Basically just has a small piece of foam in the bottom and then this elastic or stretchy material uh, to kind of hold it all in place. I don't need them on this carrier because I'm not overloading it, but they're kind of nice to have because they're not adding a ton of bulk. All right, rear bags. I'm a fan of leaving them slick. I don't like to have things permanently attached to my rear bag because then it makes it annoying to get in vehicles or scale up or down, depending if I want to throw an actual external backpack on. I don't want to have more bulk on my back. And you might just know it might be awkward to get to anything on your back. You might have to have someone else grab it for you. If I bought this carrier again, I would buy the slick rear bag. They offer two options, one with this Molly and then one without. The Molly's cool if you want to add pouches or if you want to run comms, cables through them. And for me, it doesn't really get in the way. I just don't need it. I don't find myself sticking things on the back because I like to run an assault bag with my kit. All right. I have a little sticky knife here, a little pokey poke. It's just a cold steel like burden trout or something like that knife. It's real simple and slim. That's why I have it there and I had it laying around. I basically put sticky Velcro on either side of the sheath and it's sandwiched in there, not going anywhere. And it's just there. Doesn't really get in the way, so I leave it there. All right. I talked about the mounting solutions for the placards. So I'm going to talk quick about placards. Very personal preference. Uh, this one on here is one that I made. It's not really much different than some of the other ones in the market. My wife just sewed it up for me and it works well for me. It allows me to keep everything nice and tight. It's going to be an elastic three cell. It's going to hold those mags in. So I'll still be able to re-index or, or uh, place the mags back in there. It's just not going to be quite as easy as something like an S-Tech pouch. Um, so pros and cons. One I have on now is going to be more slim sleeker to the body when i don't have mags in it it's going to collapse on itself and not have as much bulk the s tack is going to be great for that retention of your mags and for restaging or reinserting your mags into the placard it's going to work really well for that the negative to it is when there's no mags in it it's still going to retain the mag shape and be a little bulkier so it's kind of personal preference there's like four million different placards on the market so do a little research figure out what you want to run all right now that I'm all soaked, <laughs> I'm going to real quick talk staging mags. So I'm going to go back to the belt line real quick. So with belt line, belt mags, which would be my emergency reload mags, I'm going to run a beer can grip. And this is really personal preference on the belt. Beer can grip is going to be real smooth for me. I'm going to reach back, beer can grip, turn right into the mag well, right? It's simple. Other guys like to do bullets facing forward. They're going to grip that mag like they would be indexing a pistol mag, turn, and into the gun. Perfectly acceptable either way. I think running it bullets to the rear like this, beer canning, is a little faster and more efficient, but it's up to you. Plate carrier mags, how you stage them, most guys are going to like them as a right-hander, bullets facing my right side like this. So it would be opposite for me how I have my speed reload mag, and that's just because of how awkward it would be to beer can out of here. 
Now try it both ways. You might like to beer can out of your play carrier, but most guys are going to index grip their mags and then right up into the gun. Um, I would do it over here. My mag would probably get, or my, my mic would probably get knocked out, but I'll try it anyway. So I'd be in, I'd index it, pull up and straight into the gun. So it's not quite as efficient as the belt line, even though you're faster or closer to the mag well here. I find it's way faster to go right off the belt line right into the gun. Most people are going to find that too, but put yourself on a timer, kind of test it out for you. And then once you find where you like to have that speed reload pouch, I encourage guys to keep it there and keep it consistent. So have the bullets facing the same way every time, keep it in the same place, build that training rep and ingrain it into your brain. So you naturally go to that point every single time. Now that also comes with consistency of wearing kit too, right? If you're going to wear the pistol belt sometimes, but then the plate carrier by itself sometimes, then you're definitely going to need to train both ways. And you just might not be quite as efficient in the end because you're going to have multiple concepts and reloading positions, right? No, nothing wrong with that. Again, your mission, your mindset, how you're on this gear, it's up to you. So you might want to do that. Then I would just reload from the same one each time, which for me is probably going to be the one that's closest to my hand right here. Um, but consistency and training is key to building that efficiency and speed. And that goes with anything, whether it's draw, reloads, rifle stuff. In general, consistency and efficiency builds that speed. Right. And most importantly, one of my last points, probably my last point, is get out and use this stuff. If you buy it and it just sits in your closet, or sits in the safe, and you just check off that box that makes you feel good that you have that one item just in case the zombies ever come or societal unrest or whatever your reasoning for having this stuff is, it's also just cool to have. It's fun to train in, right? Use it. If you don't use it, you're not going to be proficient with it. You're not going to be comfortable in it. If you did have to wear it, you're going to end up leaving it behind or taking it off. The more you have it on, the more it becomes normal to wear. Just wear it. It sounds kind of weird, but wear it at home. If you want to get used to this and see what rides weird and where things are rubbing you weird, wear it all day or wear it for a weekend and just take it off when you're going to bed and really get a feel for what works for you. And that is really when you're going to feel that the multi-curve plates are probably more comfortable. Getting lighter weight plates, spending the extra money and saving up for a lighter weight, better set of plates, you're going to be able to wear that plate carrier all day long and have no problems. Uh, running drills with your kit on because you're going to find it might get in the way of how you shoulder your rifle or when you're moving behind cover or barricades or different shooting positions like prone and kneeling, seated positions, all that stuff, running this stuff is going to change or affect how you run your rifle or your platforms. Another thing, if you're just getting into this, it's important to build your baseline training slick. So if you're just running your duty belt, right, run slick with none of this on. That's how you build up the efficiency of your draw stroke, your reloads if you're reloading from your belt, all that, and you build up the kind of the mindset of how to run these things. Then when you're ready, run kit. You don't need to run kit all the time, but then run the same drills with your kit to make sure you're still able to maintain that level of efficiency with that kit on. But you want to build up the proper mechanics slick first. That's just kind of my preference and uh, what I kind of recommend people when they're just getting into this sort of gear. All right, another thing that I'm not sure if I said in the video at all because I pieced this together, it's been raining on me, whatever. <laughs> I appreciate you sticking with me for this long, but I like to run slick on my handgun side plate carrier cummerbund. It's important for me to be able to access my handgun to have an efficient draw, whether I have it on or I have it off. I build up a lot of time running a handgun without this on in training. I don't want to throw this on and have it completely screw up my draw stroke that I've worked on endlessly, right? So I don't like anything here. Now, if the handgun's not important to you and you don't run one, it doesn't matter. Or if you have a handgun, but it's like you really don't intend to use it, you're a rifle guy only, and that's kind of the big crate, not craze, but that's a big philosophy change nowadays is more sustainment loadouts, the recce concept, um, guys running a lot of kit, a lot of sustainment rig type stuff, and either not having a handgun 
or having it in a pack or having it somewhere that's not as easily accessible. I get that. It's hard for me to get into that mindset just because I've depended on a handgun for so many years professionally. I like having the handgun close by. I'm going to have this on all the time, whether my rifle's in my hands or not. I want my draw stroke to be efficient with or without kit. All right, that's going to conclude the video. I'm a little wet, cold and muddy, <laughs> but I enjoyed making this one for you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I appreciate it if you watched it all the way through. Uh, if you want to support the channel and this content, check out my website. It is www.wingatesolutionsllc.com. I'll put it down in the uh, description. We sell slings, sling retention straps. I'm going to add a bunch of other things to it. It's all handmade by me and my wife. Very small business, but I don't want to kind of like push it too much, but figured why not? If you're watching till now, you might enjoy it. So if you need a rifle sling or just want to check out what I have, please feel free to go over there. Uh, if you like the content, please like, subscribe, comment down below. Give me feedback on what I did right, what I did wrong, maybe how your mindset differs, or if you agree with me on some of these topics, or if I was able to help you out, any of that good stuff. I want the comments and this channel to be a community-based thing. So help each other out, give your feedback down there. That would be awesome. Uh, but anyway, I really appreciate you tuning in. Thanks for watching. Till next time, remember to get out and train.